Hello everyone. Welcome to this session. I am Uma Maheshwari and I work at Syncfusion as a senior product manager and I handle the development work of few web components as well as its growth hacking part. And today I'm going to show you something really cool. I'm going to build an AI powered content composer using the Syncfusion Blazor UI components and I will also use OpenAI APIs to implement the AI related functionalities. So this is what we are going to build today. In this image, you can see the text area at the top right corner where you can type in the topic and choose the relevant tone format and length. And when you click the generate draft, the content will be generated based on your selection. And when you review that part and add it to the document, it will be added to the word processor component. And again, when you want to rephrase specific content, you can select it and rephrase it by choosing the appropriate tone from here and then again add it to the document as well to replace the existing content. So the complete content creation part to be taken care with this particular uh, application. So before we move on to the coding part, let's have a look at the agenda. So we are going to design the UI part by using Syncfusion Blazor components and we'll use Azure OpenAI library to connect to the OpenAI APIs and then we'll be sending a prompt or queries to the OpenAI and get back the results and show it in the application part. So the prerequisites for this project, I'm going to use Visual Studio 2022 and make sure you have this workload that is ASP.NET and web development environment is installed along with it and you can use .NET 6.0 SDK or above and also you need a OpenAI API key. So as I said, I'm going to use Azure AI OpenAI library. So using this particular library, you can either connect to the Azure OpenAI resource or to the non-Azure OpenAI endpoint. If you want to connect to the OpenAI resource, then you will need to use the connection URL as well as the API keys. So you will get both of these options when you go with this Azure OpenAI resource. And in case if you are going to connect to the non-Azure OpenAI option, then you'll just need an API key from the OpenAI platform. So I have generated one myself to use in this project today. So now let's move on to the coding part. So I'm going to create a Blazor WebAssembly project. So let me create a new project. And from the project template, I choose Blazor WebAssembly standalone app and I'll name my project as AI Content Composer. Then I click the next button. So let me keep the framework as .NET 8.0 and now I'll create this project. All right, the project has been created. Now, as a first step, I need to define the uh, API key inside this project. So for that, I'm going to create app settings.json under this www root folder. I'll add a new item and name it as app settings.json. And inside this file, I'll define two variables, openAI key. And here you need to provide your API key. And next option is endpoint. If you are going to use Azure AI resource, then you will need this endpoint variable. So here you will need to pass the URL. So as I said, I'm just going to use the non-Azure OpenAI. I'll define as null here. So here I'll be copy pasting my OpenAI API key. So I will do it off screen. Now I need to initialize the OpenAI client. So before that, I'll create the services folder. Inside the services folder, I'll create a class and name it as OpenAI service. So this is where we are going to connect to the OpenAI. We'll send queries to the OpenAI and then receive back results from it. So the next step is I need to set up a configuration in the program.cs file. So I'll go to program.cs file. Here, let me comment out this line. And first, I'll create an instance of OpenAI service class. So I'll access it from the services. Next, I need to register the service. So builder.services 
And here I'll pass the OpenAI service class and I'll also pass the instance here. Next, I'll build the application and next I need to retrieve the configuration settings. So for that, I'll define a variable config and assign builder.configuration. This configuration typically includes the settings uh, that are specified in the app settings.json file. So let me create a variable open AI key and by using the config variable, I can access that open AI key. So in the same way, I can also access the endpoint open AI endpoint using the config variable. So now I, I need to initialize the open AI client. So I'll be defining the initialize method inside this open AI service class. Uh, but I, I'm going to pass this open AI key and endpoint from this particular program.cs file. So now let me make a call to the initialize method and then I'll go to the open AI service and define that method there. So let me make use of the instance of OpenAI service class from here and I'll make a call to initialize method which I'll be defining shortly. So I'll pass the OpenAI key as well as OpenAI endpoint and then I'll make the application to run from here. Okay, so now let me move on to the OpenAI service.cs and here as I said, I'm going to define this initialize method. So before that, let me install the Azure AI OpenAI library first. So I'll open the manage NuGet package. And here you need to in include pre-releases and search for Azure AI OpenAI package. And here we found it. So I'll go with the beta 15 and install it. All right, the package is installed. So now move on to the OpenAI service class and import the Azure packages and then I'll define the initialize method here. So here you can see the OpenAI client object and it is initialized with the OpenAI key here. So the next step is I'm going to create a method for chat completions model and I will show you how to send a message as input to OpenAI and get a model generated message as output. So this is the method. So using the chat request system message, we are providing the instruction to the AI and using the chat request user message, actually we are passing the input. So the AI will follow the instruction passed on to the system message and based on that instruction, it will act upon the user provided input. All right. So now we are done with defining this call open AI chat method. So uh, from the UI, we'll be passing on these instructions as well as the input. So now let's see how to send these messages from the UI. Uh, as I said before that we are going to design the UI by making use of the Syncfusion Blazor components. So we need to install few packages into this application now. So I right click on the project and in the NuGet packages, install the word processor syncfusion.blazor.inputs, dropdowns package, pop-ups package, notifications package, buttons package. So you can refer to these packages here. All these components we are going to make use of in this application to design the UI. So once the packages are installed, let's move on to the imports.razor page. And sorry, before that, Go to the program.cs file and here you need to import syncfusion.blazor and register the Syncfusion Blazor service using add Syncfusion Blazor method. And also I need to provide the license key by using the register license method. So here I have provided the key and then I'll move on to the imports.razor file. And here I'll import the packages of all the components that I'm going to use in this application. So these are the components. I have included the namespace here in imports.razor page so that I can use all these components in any of the pages. Then move on to the index.html page. And here I need to refer the theme as well as the script reference. And one more thing I forgot to install here. So just nothing but the theme package of Syncfusion Blazor components. So in the manage NuGet package, search for syncfusion.blazor.theme and install it. All right. 
we are done with the configuration part and now let's dive into the technical details of setting up the UI with Syncfusion Blazor components and let's integrate it with the OpenAI services. So I'm not going to do a line by line coding now, rather I'll show you the code along with the output. In the home page, uh, basically the components are arranged in a two column responsive layout. So this is how it is placed. So there is a row and in the first column, the word processor component is being placed, which occupies one third of the page. So at the right side column, the text area, chip components, generate button and one more preview text area, this one. And at last, the add to document button, here it is. So apart from this, we also have two more dialogue components that are added, but it is kept in an invisible state. They are made visible only when the summary and the rephrase features are used. Now let's ask the OpenAI to write about any topic. So I'll give the input topic as Earth Day 2024. Let me choose the tones from here. Let's go with creative and poem and choose long. So now when I click the generate draft button, inside this event handler, we have captured the input value that is being typed into the text box and along with the other selected options in the from the chip control, and here we have framed instruction that is to be passed to the OpenAI and then we are passing it to the call OpenAI chat. In the input value, you can see the value that we typed into the text box area. So you can see the skeleton component is being displayed there until the content is being retrieved from the OpenAI. Now you can see the preview content variable here, which is having the content that is being retrieved from the AI. Now I want to show this preview content inside the text box area. So this preview content, go to the home page. And if you look at this text box area, the preview content variable is bind to its value. So now let's continue to run the application and here you can see the content is being displayed in the preview text box area and when I click this add to document button inside this handler we have this generated preview content so I'm going to insert this content into the word processors editor area. So let me run this. And now you can see the content is being inserted into the word processor. Now let's discuss the rephrasing feature. When you select some text inside this document editor and when you right click over it, you will get the context menu. And if I choose this rephrase with AI option and inside this particular handler, now I'm going to get the selected text from the word processor by using this selection.getText as in. So now the doc selected text will contain the selected uh, text from the word processor. And now I will show the rephrase dialog on the screen. And to the open AI, I'll pass this prompt as well as the selected content from the word processor. So in this rephrased text variable, you can see the text that is being newly written from the open AI. So this rephrased text, the content portion of the dialog will hold this Okay, now let's see how it is displaying. So you can see the dialogue with the rephrased content. If in case I want to rephrase this again with different tone format and length, then I can regenerate the sentence with the chosen values and then I can add the rephrased version to the selected uh, sentence of the word processor by just clicking on this add to document button. Now let's see what this regenerate button click handler will do. And here you can see I got the uh, newly selected values from the drop downs and I framed an instruction here and passing this to the open AI. So along with this message, I'll also pass the input as the selected content from the word processor. So now you can see until the content is being loaded, the skeleton component will be displayed on the dialog content area. So now let me click on the continue and see once the content is displayed, the skeleton will disappear. 
Now I am going to replace this regenerated content into the document editor workspace. So, so I'll click on this add to document and here inside this click event handler, I'm going to close the dialog and then in the rephrase text variable, you have this rephrased version. So I'm just inserting it into the document area. So let me continue it. Here you can see the selected content being replaced with the regenerated content. Okay, so that's all about this session. To summarize, I have showed you how to seamlessly integrate OpenAI GPT with Syncfusion Blazor components for efficient content creation and rephrasing. So before we part ways, let me quickly point you to this QR code on the screen. You can unlock the GitHub repository for the demo we have just explored. And you can also visit our virtual booth to download these slides and all the resources we talked about today. And while you are there, you can also have access to free resources and some exciting giveaways. So thank you all for your time and happy exploring.